Coldwell. Uh, Mrs. I think, Coldwell. I think I ought to answer, this Joe. This is Detective Inspector no. Seabright, Mrs. Coldwell. But, but, but he'll, he'll know I'm here from the light. All right, turn him off. Oh, he's gone. But he, they'll know, though. All right, they'll know. They're all around the back. I just saw them. Little heads bobbing up and down. Little heads. They're bobbing up and down. You, you've done something wrong, haven't you, Joe? Yeah. Yeah, I've done something wrong. What have you done? I'm not telling you. Oh, I wish you'd tell me, I'm not Joe. telling you. Not even me. No! Look, I'm not telling you. Oh. Are you scared of me? No, of course not. You don't have to be scared of me. I'm not frightened of you, Joe. I, mean, I wouldn't want to hurt you. No, I know you wouldn't. Well, you don't have to make any noise. Now, you understand that? Yes, yes, I understand, Joe. And you just... You just be good, all right? Yes, I, I'll be good, Joe. Poor Joe. Well, do you think you can talk him out? I'll try, sir. Where is he? Do we know? In the back room. Show him round, will you? A sergeant, Joe. Now, if you don't come out, we're coming in. Oh, whatever was it? He has a gun. What do they know what it is? No, no. You see, somebody shouted and he fired the gun right through the window. Do they, is she? No, don't know. Len's trying to find out. Well, there's no one else she could be. Hey, where's your dad? Well, they're gawping with the rest of them, I suppose. It's a good thing you locked up the shop before you came out, otherwise he might have gone in there. It took more than a lot to stop him. All this time and you never suspected her. I more than suspected, I knew. Oh, well, now, like, yeah. I've known for ages, ma'am. You couldn't have. I did. But how could you have? Because he told me, that's why. But you never said nothing. Why didn't you never say nothing? You wouldn't have said nothing, neither if it, he'd have told you what he'd do to you, same as he did with me. Why didn't I never say nothing? Honestly, do you think I didn't want to say something? It's been awful, ma'am. I mean, you read about these things, don't you, about the Mafia and that. Well, you see, he said if he didn't get me, his friends would. Well, go on, what would you have done, eh? What big clever thing would you have done? Well, they think she's in there. Oh, oh. Well, the lights were still on two minutes ago. It seems very odd to me. I see. So I suppose they're all going to get ready now to shoot it out, as they call it, where they're just sitting there. They won't do that, Mrs. Shell. Well, they do watch the telly, you know. They carry a gun in every pocket to these yanks. They'll be selling intercontinental missiles from every corner shot before some blooming Shuffles, there's a police inspector out there. Oh, and who's in charge, eh? He is. Ooh, one doesn't ever see, so I'll believe it when I see it. Well, it's right, you know. I mean, the yanks were only invited. They've got nothing to do with it. The only people who can arrest Danelli are the English police. Well, thank God for that. He wouldn't hurt Mrs. Caldwell, I'm sure. Now, you're not trying to tell me he's normal, even by their standards. Look, Mrs. Shovels, they don't enjoy the situation any more than you do, and their image is at stake. Oh, it's not their image I'm worried about. Well, ours isn't looking too good in Belfast at the moment, is it? Now, look, when did two wrongs make one right, Len Fact? I mean, shut up, all of you! The more you talk, the further away you get from what it's all about. And what it's all about, as far as I'm concerned, is Minnie Caldwell. Come on, Greg, talk to me. Listen to you. I wouldn't know what to say. Oh, come on, Greg, we're his friends. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, how does this thing work? Just uh, press and speak. Oh, okay. <laughs> Joe! Joe! This is Greg, fella. Gary's here with me, Joe. We want you to come on up, boy. The guys are all around the place. 
better come out, Joe. Gary and me will speak up for you, boy. We know what a son of a bitch he's got to be, don't we, Joe? Joe? Let the old lady out, Joe. Hey, fella? Joe? 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 You want to go? Yes, Joe. You want to leave me on my own? No, Joe. You know, my mother married again after Pop died. We moved to a, an apartment in Buffalo. And six floors up. And in the fall, when you looked out the window, you couldn't see anything of Buffalo. Only the other blocks. They were like icebergs sticking up out of the fog. She never should have married that man. Wasn't he nice, Joe? Oh, he's all right. But all the same, she never should have married him. Perhaps she was lonely. Me! I was lonely! Me! I was very lonely when Armistead died. And... We used to go up the lake a lot. When Pop was alive. And we were pretty good swimmers. We were. And one time we went to Niagara. And I'd never seen anything like that before in my life. Way up there. Looking all that way down. You have never seen anything like that. It's so big. And great. The biggest and the greatest and bigger. The whole world. It's me and Pop looking down at Niagara. I saw a film about Niagara on television. It was uh, Marilyn Monroe. Poor girl. Poor Joe. Well, that was the biggest. And the greatest. The greatest in the whole world. Hey, Stan, come over here. Where have you been? Oh, this young one who got to the police station, you know, so he ran me down in his jeep. Did he bring me back? Did he, I guess, like. I never do another favour of flipping young as long as I live, I tell you. What's going on? Hey, she knew. She knew all the time. You what? All about it, what was going on. He told her. He told her? Well, why didn't you say out? Ah, oh, well, he threatened her, you see. Huh? He's in the Mafia. Oh, shut up, Mum. I never said he was in the Mafia. I said you read about it. You know, you read, think, use your imagination. Oh, yeah, sorry, love. Would you like another drink? Yes, a bottle of brandy. Get a brandy. I'm skint. Stan. Here, get a brandy. Thanks, Dad. Do you like joke? Just feel as if I've been in the fridge for a year. But why didn't you tell somebody? I made flipping immense meat of him. Why didn't you tell me? I don't want to talk about it, Dad. No, 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 of course not. A dirty little rat and I made flipping immense meat of him. Where's he now? He's in Mrs. Caldwell's. Well, why haven't I got him out? Because she's in there with him, of course. A dirty little rat. Look, uh, you stay here with your man. You stay here with your man. Oh, don't go out, God. You stay here Dad. with your man. Where's your dad going? I don't know. I suppose somebody will come and tell us something in due course. Well, we were told to stop inside, weren't we? I know some of us haven't, but that's the way it goes, isn't it? I'll poke my head out of the door if you like. I'll go. Hey, see if you can find that Detective Jones. He's one of Arthur's old sidekicks, you know. He should be out there somewhere. Yes, sir. I'm obliged. You're very welcome, Mr. Jones. Well? Yeah. Yeah, what? Takes you back a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I know. I know somebody else you were thinking and all. What? You were thinking, well, well, I was wrong after all. What about? Oh, come on, Elsie, about who killed Steve. You thought it was me, didn't you? If you think I could stand talking to you and taking drinks off you all those years if I thought that, 
I thought of at the time, but that was then. We get about these things, we just go on living. Yeah. Yeah. You look tired. Well, like you said, it takes you back. Water under the bridge and all that. You wouldn't have, would you? What? Done a thing like that for me. No. No. Well, it just goes to show, doesn't it? What? Oh. Summit to nothing. You know, I always used to feel sorry for you when you looked tired. I should have looked tired more often, shouldn't I? Is that what you wanted? Someone to feel sorry for you? When you get to my age, look, you begin to settle for anything. You know something? Yeah. We sound like an old married couple. We do just that. <laughs> oh. Well, well, if it isn't Inspector Castle. Mrs. Tanner, Mr. Fairclough, you remember me then? Or I should have said another one who thought it was me. Is that why you didn't get your... Promotion, Inspector, because the case was never closed. I did, as a matter of fact, as Chief Inspector. Oh, in that case, we'd better drink to it, didn't we? Not for me, thanks. Oh, it's like a family gathering, isn't it? Ah, it's like a flipping wake. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I heard there were some Americans involved in a rumpus in Coronation Street. And you put two and two together and came up with five. Well, I haven't done the sums yet, Mr. Fairclough, but I can't quite see how Danelli fits in. Why not? He had an alibi. He hasn't got one now. You want to talk to that woman? She'll tell you where you went wrong. Hold on. Didn't I see you down the bottom end a couple of minutes ago? Oh, well, I come down. You see, both ends of the back are you know, sort of blocked up, like you know. And uh, <laughs> but can't you get through the back door? Though? What? With the old girl in there? He wouldn't have many call. Well, ah, yes, but we're keeping well back till we see if he lets her out. Oh, uh, yeah. now, hold on a minute. You can't go in there. I'm going to my house. No, but it's to go down the street. I'm not going down the street, am I? I I'm going to my house to get my tablets. I have to have them, you know, uh, every two hours. Like I'm an hour late now. Uh, my knees feel a bit wobbly, anyway. Oh. <laughs> you know. well, Tell you what I'll do. I'll whip in, whip out. All right? All right. Right. Can, can I go now, Joe? You want to leave me? Well, n no, not in a way. Only, I'm feeling very tired. They won't try to come in here for me as long as you're here. You know that. Yes, yes, I know. Only, well, well Joe, you, you can't stop here forever, can you? Oh, hello, Mr. Ogden. Uh, you're right, Mrs. Cornwell. Oh, how did you get in here? Oh, well, I uh, came over the back walls, you know. <laughs> Look, uh, y you go now, love. I'll look after this fella. He's right, Ma, you go. You go, I'm all right now. Stan will stay and keep me company. Won't you, Stanley? <laughs> Light's gone on, so in the back room. He's need to close the curtains. Right. Can I get you another brandy, Mrs. Sharples? You can get me one with pleasure, but I can't promise to pay for it. Oh. I don't think you need to worry about Mrs. Caldwell, you know. Nobody would hurt Mrs. Caldwell. Nobody. Excuse me. Billy Lad, I'm not worried about whether he'll hurt her. It's what's going to happen to her state of mind. She'll be turned to stone inside there with that mad specimen. <laughs> You, sh you shouldn't have done that to our room. Shut up, windbag. Well, you shouldn't. You know something, Stan? Uh, You're fat. Well, don't insult me. Fat. A bit overweight, maybe, yes, but that, that's all. Fat, Stanley, fat! Fat! Steady. Don't move. 
Don't move, Stanley. <laughs> you carry around a lot of weight there, Stanley. Why don't you sit down and rest it? Hmm? You sit down. Mm -hmm. And you relax. Why did you give Donnelly an alibi? Well, I think uh, Gary was scared, sir, that he didn't have one for himself. I'm asking him. Is that right? Yes, sir. Were you aware of the fact that you were committing perjury? Well, not exactly, sir. Well, we're uh, not too well up on your laws, sir. Perjury is perjury in any judicial system, Sergeant, as I'm sure you're well aware. Yes, sir. Anyway, the case is out of my hands now. When we get your chap, as we undoubtedly will, I shall be obliged to hand him over to your people for a court-martial. Let's hope he gets his just desserts. Oh, I'm sure he will, sir. What would his just desserts be, Sergeant, would you say? Well, uh, I think he's a nutcase, sir. So... Oh, Mrs. Caldwell. Where do you think you've been? I've been at home either. Well, come and sit down. I'm all right now. Shall I get you a brandy, Mrs. Yes, get you a brandy. I asked him what he did wrong, only he wouldn't tell me. Is he absent without leave? Oh, yes, he is that, Mrs. Caldwell. Well, I don't think he'll stay in there very long now. Not that Mr. Ogden's gone in to talk to him. What was that, Mrs. Caldwell? Uh, Mr. Ogden's gone in to talk to him. Didn't you know? Come on, Sergeant. Oh, Come on, Lord. No, well, well, where's my mum gone? She's well, at the I... other end of the seat. No, 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 leave her, dear. How about a little song, Stanley? Eh? A song? You know, or, or, or Carol. It's every Carol. That's what we need, a little peace. And goodwill. You know what my favorite Carol is, Stanley? You guess what my favorite Carol is. Good King Wenceslas. That's wrong, Stanley, that's wrong. Silent Night? Hey, that's it. That, that's the one. You know the words? Well, just, just one verse. Well, that's all right. We'll do it together. Okay, on the count of three. All right. One, two, three. Stanley, you're not you're not cooperating, Stanley. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, but I, I you know. Well, well, look, Stanley, you be a good boy, and you won't get hurt. Oh, you uh, you were trying to hurt me, didn't you? Well, I'm sorry about that. Sometimes I'm sorry. Sometimes I'm not. I I do a lot of bad things, Stanley. I never should have been born, you know that. I never should have been born. You don't like me very much, do you? Well, I, 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 I don't know, you know. You're poorly, aren't you? Poorly? Yeah. Yeah, poorly. Stanley, I'd really like to sing that carol, and I'd like you to really help. Will you do it? And we'll try again, and we'll count three. We'll do that? All right. Well, one, two, three. Silent night, holy night, all is calm. Come on, Stanley, sing it louder. Put your foot on it, Stanley. Yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Round yon virgin. Talk to him. I mean, he's by himself now. No, hang on a minute, love. If he's Doolally, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no use upsetting him. Look, quite a bit, everybody. Thought I heard something.
Ina, I know. It's my turn. No, no, it, it's about this week. What about this week? Well, it's Christmas. I know, love. I, I don't think I could face sleeping at home for a bit yet. I never slept a wink last night. You slept with me last night. Yes, but I couldn't face another night of it, though, could you? No, now you come to mention it, I couldn't either, which is why I'm making arrangements. I've got your spare room. At any rate, negotiations are in progress. Oh, where, Ina? Oh, we'll leave that until we're sure, shall we? I'm just off to see a man about a cat. Don't you mean a dog? Now, if I'd meant a dog, I would have said a dog. Oh, Stan's come out of it well, you know. It's funny, you look at some fellas and you wouldn't think they'd say boo to a goose. And deep down, there's all sorts of things going on. <coughs> Quite a bit of his. And a gin. And a gin. And a tonic. And a tonic. And a pint of bitter, please. Ah, uh, that's two pints of bitter and two oh. gins and tonics. Oh, sorry. Just trying to put a Christmas take in. Jump us off. Has Miss Nugent been in? Uh, in and gone. Only I can do it for you. Do what? Strike your name off the Christmas outing list, right? Right. Oh, no, she's left it in. Yeah. I mean, there's only you two and uh, Albert Tatlock left. All on account last night, they keep saying, but uh, if you ask me, nobody wanted to go in the first place, right? Right. Yes. Good old Emily Nugent. I precious salesmanship. Oh, I'm afraid there's uh, no money back because the uh, coach has already been booked. You're making us feel awful about her. Oh, you can put your handkerchiefs away. Len's just gone down the wreck, see if he can get a young gang of young tearaways for a free outing. Ah, here he is. Man of the moment. Now, Stan, what are you going to have? No, no, this one's on me. No, it's not. It's on the house. Mum's orders. Stan Ogden is not the man she first thought he was, she said. You're embarrassing me now, you know. Uh, I'll have a whiskey and chaser, huh? I'll bet you catch her and all, Mr Ogden. Stanley. <laughs> and a gin and tonic, thank you very much. And keep pumping, will you, mate, and stick a glass underneath for me. Right. By the heck, I hope I've done the right thing. Oh, no, look. Oh, I've got a coach, look, all right. I just feel sorry for the coach. Rough, eh? They look as if cast iron had melted in their mouths. Those we need some strong arm men. Who's left on the list? Albert by the left tatlock. <laughs> oh, may the Lord rest on his soul. Right. <laughs> That big mouth woman we're in the corner shop this morning. You know her off Maudsley Street with the big fat husband what wears curlers all the time? Well, she reckoned you didn't know he had a gun. Well, she did, did she? Yeah. Of course, I never told you, neither did our Irma. And you was down at the police station when the shot were fired. I suppose one of the Yanks told you, did he? Ah, that was it. Uh, one of the Yanks told me, yeah. Oh. big mm. mouth. Oh, yeah. I give her a piece of my mind, I can tell you. You know, it's funny to wake up one morning and find itself what he might call a sort of uh, hero. <laughs> Of course, I only did it for our room, eh? And you. You've always been here out of me, Stan. You give all this. Albert, just the fellow I'm looking for. Are you going off on this coach trip? Well, why shouldn't I be? Well, you're going on your top. Oh. Oh, well, in that case, I won't bother. Uh, where do I get my money back? I'm afraid you don't. But I paid up, didn't I? Uh, well, it's what you might call uh, non-returnable. Oh, oh, well, I'm going. Are you sure? Of yeah, course I'm sure. Well, please yourself. Yeah, and I'll do that and all, won't I? Look, and don't you run away with the idea that I'm always after something for now. I took Minnie Colwell in in her hour of need and I reckon I'm entitled to go on this trip. What I've paid for. And by the look of them kids, he's going to get his money's worth. <laughs>